Hey, what's up guys? E back with another action figure review and today we are looking at the Hasbro Marvel Legends X-Men Age of Apocalypse Colossus Build-A-Figure Wave. This is Rogue. And Rogue comes packed in with an arm of Colossus as you can see. And we have a very colorful and vibrant figure ahead of us. So pretty cool. Can't wait to open it up. Here is the side of the package with some nice artwork as always. I love the artwork from the Age of Apocalypse waves. Now we have two, so I can say that in plural. And then here's the back side, showing the rest of the wave. And then the build figure on the left side there. There is a read up at the top as always, and this time it reads, Rogue moves her way up the ranks of Magneto's X-Men, eventually leading a team of mutants to prevent the culling of humankind. So I'm really liking Rogue's colors, as I mentioned, very colorful and vibrant, and it's painted on very, very nice. I think the highlight of this figure is the paint job. Lots of nice painting going on here, and not too much, just molded plastic. So I like how clean it came out as well. Uh, she is light on the accessories department, which is something I have noticed with a lot of the recent Marvel Legends, is they're getting lighter and lighter with accessories, some of them coming without anything at all just the figure only uh, so I don't know if that's something that is gonna be the norm now or what uh, but she only does come with a pair of hands so right now we can see she has the open hands and then we get a pair of fists and that's it that's it for her and then that's of course not counting the build a figure piece if we want to count that then yes she comes with something else and the build a figure piece that she has or that she comes with is the left arm of Colossus and then also an alternate hand for that left arm. So we get a fist and we get the open hand right there. And that's it. Alright, so here's a close look at the figure. And we'll start off with the head. As always, the head sculpt is looking very, very good. Hasbro continues to improve and to uh, get better and better as they release figures with head sculpts. And, I mean, honestly, the entire figure overall across the board just gets improvements and gets better every year. So, definitely and digging this one here you can see how big i guess the bangs are to the point where it casts a shadow over her eyes uh you have to kind of get her looking up to see it underneath there but the hair sculpt is very nice the face sculpt is very nice too the paint job is nice speaking of the paint job now we can look at the paint job up close and we can see here that collar piece is painted green and the, the silver buttons there we got some some nice green on the uh, on the arms, going down to her hands. There is a big old peg hole on the back that's not utilized for anything. It's just a reused mold, so it's there. And then notice that that collar piece is pegged in into another peg hole. Just it's already pre-attached there. Going down to the groin slash thighs. The thigh has or the right thigh has a band that is similar to. Our Nightmares from the Jim Lee Cyclops, he had those bands around his thighs and they kept falling. So this will fall too, but you saw how tight that was It's because I pushed it up. If you push it up as far as you can, then it's not going to go anywhere. So nothing to worry about there. I do wish that was just permanently there. I don't see the point of having it removable. Then if it is molded, then you can't really reuse the, uh, the leg mold, right, for another figure. So that makes sense. And then you can also see here, we have pinless knee so this is a brand new leg mold now the arms are pinless too but technically they're single jointed i mean they are single jointed so they've always been pinless they're not double jointed and then we have the boots looking very very nice here too and here's one more look at those open hands and then here's a look at the alternate hands the fist hands attached i also do want to point out that she has removable little wristbands here they're actually meant to be the bottom of the glove but they are a separate piece, so that moves. If you take the hand out, it's going to come off. But you just push this back up once the hand's attached. And now it looks like it's part of the glove. Alright, so moving on to the articulation, we'll start with the head. It sits on a ball-jointed hinge, so we're going to get some extreme motion here. She looks all the way up, and she looks all the way down too, despite having those you know, hair pieces there. They are pliable enough to the point where she can look all the way down. And then... Left and right just fine. We get some pretty deep um, head tilting here as well. Arms are going to go all the way around, forward and back, in and out. No bicep swivel, no double jointed elbows, but we do get the elbow swivel because it is a single joint. 
course we get the hinge here at a 90 degree bend and then we get the wrist on a swivel and a hinge diaphragm joint at the torso goes left and right forward and back that also acts as the swivel since there is no waist swivel legs are going to kick forward all the way up good range there back down in and out not so good range on the in and out here you can see that's as far as she goes we get a thigh swivel double jointed pinless knees right here ankle hinge forward and back there's the ankle rocker no ankle swivel no boot cut swivel either all right, so first up for comparisons, I'll throw in our Rogue from the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure Wave. This is still a favorite of mine. I still like this Rogue a lot. And uh, there she is. She does stand a little taller, and she looks a lot more mature and older, for sure. All right, and now with all that being said about the Juggernaut version of Rogue, here is the retro-carded Vintage Wave Rogue. And this is my favorite Rogue action figure out right now. I like this look. It's so classic and comic book accurate that um, it is definitely my favorite Rogue figure um, in my collection. So this is how she stacks up next to our Age of Apocalypse Rogue. Putting her next to some of her wave mates, I'll throw in Cyclops. And again, all of these wave mates that you see, pretty much every figure you see compared um, is going to already have a review up. So if you are ever interested in seeing a review, then go ahead and backtrack and check that out. Uh, but here she is stacked up next to Cyclops, stands slightly shorter than him if you're not counting the hair. Up next we have Magneto and he stands a lot taller than Rogue, as he should. So, and then here is Sabretooth, the biggest figure of the wave. I'll put him back here, he's still not in frame. Let's tilt the camera up just a little bit and he's standing a few steps behind her and he's still that, that massive. So, Alright, now we're going back a little bit to Series 1 of Age of Apocalypse. We'll throw in Sunfire. Here we have Nate Gray. Here we have Jean Gray and Kendall Gray. And then, of course, we have Wild Child. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this review of the Marvel Legends X-Men Age of Apocalypse Colossus Build-A-Figure Wave of Rogue. Guys, I'm officially halfway through this wave. I have already reviewed Sabretooth, Magneto, and Cyclops, so if you missed out on those, go ahead and check those reviews out. They are some very nice figures. And stay tuned for the remainder of this wave. Coming up next, we have Iceman, and then we still have Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat, and Legion. You know the drill. Leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I do read your comments. Although I may not always reply, I always try to. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, take care, take it easy, and have a great day. Bye. Crispy.